Greetings, peace be with you. So in this video, I want to dive into a bit of a sensitive topic for some people, which is the primary dangers of veganism. So at this point, it seems like food, nutrition, and your subscription to your particular nutrition philosophy seems to have become the new religion at this point. There's like people fighting over what food is the best and what's the right way to eat, what's the wrong way to eat. Now, that is not the focus of this video, okay? This whole channel is not focused on the idea of moral righteousness about what's right, what's wrong, because frankly, I do not believe that there is such thing as right or wrong, right? I think that people do what is what they think is best for them according to their model of reality i don't think anyone does anything particularly wrong according to their model of reality everyone's doing the best with where they are with what they have based on their experiences based on their knowledge so this is not about right or wrong what this is about is what works and what does not work and what our objective is is to function with optimal health with optimal vitality with optimal energy to have that drive, to have that fuel that allows our body to function at that peak capacity as well. And the fact is that when that is our objective, then there is what works and there's what doesn't work. And the thing with nutrition science and nutrition philosophy, it seems like there is a lot of dogmatism around with it, right? So the primary danger of veganism is that it is an ism, okay? It's like, oh, I'm vegan, you're not, that means you're a worse person than me. Oh, you don't, you eat plant, you eat animals? Oh, that just means that you're not spiritual, right? So that's not what we're here for. We're about how we can optimize our nutrition so that we can function optimally, right? Because I know that this is a sensitive topic. There's actually an entire book written on this topic. It's called Diet Cults, right? And how people are literally making like diet their new religion and using it to divide each other. And it's like, I'm this, you're that. And that means we're different. And if you don't believe what I believe, then you're going to be burning in hell at some point, right? So that's not what we're here for. But I want to share with you a scary story about my experience with a plant-based diet, okay? Because this is something that a lot of people don't consider, that there is an agenda, okay? There's an agenda around food in general. And when we are not aware, when we begin subscribing to these isms, when we don't think for ourselves and we subscribe to what we heard from someone else, then we might be acting on an agenda which we are not completely aware of, right? Like watching a documentary like Game Changers or What the Health and then thinking that, oh, gladiators, yeah, they ate, they ate vegan diet. So that means that I want to be a warrior and therefore I'm going to start eating a vegan diet. But most people don't consider that gladiators were actually slaves, right? They were slaves that were fighting to the death. And I don't know if the the royalty would waste meat, right, on slaves at the end of the day. But that is besides the point right so i want to share with you my scary experience so towards the end of 2019 is when i was uh, living in bali so if you know about bali indonesia you know that it's a very big spiritual community over there and a lot of vegan restaurants over there and that was the first time i was like okay man like i see all these people around me and you know i never really considered the whole process of what an animal goes through about you know, slaughtering and igniting pain on certain animals that are brought up in a factory environment. I never considered that. It was not in my awareness. I was ignorant of my ignorance. And it wasn't until I went to Bali, I was like, okay, man, like I have to be more aware about my food choices because that plays an impact on the bigger picture. So I'm going to go on a largely plant-based diet. So there's a lot of vegan restaurants in Bali and they cater to this because it's a huge spiritual community. And there's a lot of spiritual people who are engaged in this. But then again, the ego is tricky, right? Because it's like, oh, I'm spiritual. I eat vegan. You don't. You're a demon, right? So I, I was eating plant-based for a while. And to be quite honest, I think I was more in touch with my higher chakras. Okay, now whether that had to do directly with the food or whether that had to do with the environment I was living in, it could be a number of factors. But that was the first time in Bali where I was committing to actually making videos every single day, opening up my throat chakra, getting more aligned with the flow, with myself. And... It was great for the beginning, okay? It was great for the beginning. But then I experienced something that was quite scary, which was out of the blue. I was training at the gym. I experienced some cramps in my stomach. I was like, I'm just going to call it a day. And then when I went back to my villa, I ended up, the pain started getting more and more intense to the point where it became excruciating. It became so excruciating that I was literally crying. And I thought that, you know, I hadn't cried out of pain for a long time and I have a pretty high tolerance for pain, at least to my estimation. 
and i was like whoa this is this is crazy i never experienced anything like this like i wouldn't wish this pain on my worst enemy and then i somehow managed to get to the emergency room i got an ultrasound done and turns out that i was experiencing an inflamed small intestine right they gave me some painkillers i was all good and at that point i was just like i have no idea why this just happened how this just happened like was it my energy was it some person i was dealing with i just was clueless and i was like i just hope it doesn't happen again and i just still stuck with it right and then it happened again a couple of months later and that was the point where i was like okay this is an area that needs to be addressed like what is going on in the backdrop and that was when i started diving deep into the science a lot of books and stuff and if you are vegan and if you're considering to go vegan because i know a lot of people are who watch subscribe to this channel are you know they're on their spiritual path and i see comments sometimes saying that oh do you have to be vegan to experience your higher self do you have to be vegan to be spiritual and you know there are people telling me oh you should be vegan as well so i was plant-based for a while and what i'm coming to at the end of the day is you know when i dove deep into this condition that i was experiencing turns out that i was experiencing a lot of the symptoms associated with leaky gut right that something was going on in my gut and the deeper i dove the more i realized that there was something going on with my microbiome right which is the collection of microorganisms which live in and around our body more primarily in our gut there's trillions of organisms over there and turns out that i could have had like either a small intestinal bacterial overgrowth or a fungal overgrowth and as i dove deeper into the research i came to realize that plant products plant foods are a large culprit behind that okay and i got my gut test done from a company called viome and they tested a stool sample and i found that i was actually intolerant to dark leafy greens like broccoli like spinach like kale and they contain something known as oxalates and oxalates can end up for forming crystals in our small intestine and that can be piercing which could have been a primary factor behind the issues that i was experiencing okay so there's a book by dr stephen gundry which is uh, i think it's called the hidden dangers of healthy food or something like that. check that out okay check that out because he dives deep into how plants release their own defense mechanisms because they do not want to be eaten, right? There's lectins, which are a protein which can cause inflammation. There are anti-nutrients which end up blocking the uh, absorption of other nutrients in our body as well. And then there's like these effects that some people can experience, like I was experiencing from oxalates, right? So, you know, the belief that, oh, plant foods are healthy or, you know, you have nothing to worry about, that is something that is just based on belief. If you dive deeper into the research, for example, uh, the Plant Paradox by Dr. Stephen Gundry. I think that provides a lot of insight in terms of the dangers of eating a plant-based diet, right? So that's what I experienced. And after diving deeper, I found a lot of research around the carnivore diet. And I found that it was very... There's a lot of anecdotal evidence around the beneficial effects that it had on the gut overall because they're very easily digestible, right? So that's the first point to consider. That what does it mean to be healthy, right? What is a food healthy? So there's two points to consider. The first one is the nutrient density, right? The macronutrients, the proteins, the fats, and the carbs, right? So first and foremost, plant protein are not complete in their amino acid profile. That's just the first thing to consider. That's why it's very difficult to build adequate amounts of muscle and strength while on a plant-based diet. And secondly, it's about digestibility because even if a particular plant food is high in nutrient density if it's not being metabolized if it's not being digested then it's pretty much like you're eating junk food because it ends up causing inflammation right because the oxalates were not being broken down by my gut because i did not have the oxalobacter bacterium in my gut it was not being broken down and therefore no matter how nutriently dense it was it was causing inflammation in the small intestine okay so that's the first point right like i experienced that and then i've been on a carnivore diet i cut out plant foods it was ma mainly like lentils and dark leafy greens and i at this point after being on carnivore for 30 days i do eat fruit but it's largely animal based right so the real question is what works and what doesn't work and i tried a vegan diet and a plant-based diet and it didn't work for me because it caused me health issues and as i dove deeper into the research i came to discover that this is a very common phenomenon and it's very related to chronic disease as well 
because the gut is associated with 70% of our immune system and if the food is not being metabolized it's causing inflammation and that can cause a lot of issues down the road. So that's just a point of awareness for you to consider over here. Now the second point is that of the morality behind eating plant product um, behind eating animal products. It's like why would you kill an animal to eat it, right? And I thought I thought like that, but that was at the point in my journey where I thought that plants were not conscious, right? I used to believe that plants did not have consciousness, but who, who am I to say that? And now as I dive deeper, there's a book written on this it's called The Secret Life of Plants about how plants have a consciousness and they have a stress response as well. And that ends up for them releasing those defense mechanisms like lectins, like, you know, a lot of other uh, proteins that they release as defense mechanisms so that the person who, or person or animal that's eating them, it actually hinders them from that, right? So that's very important to consider that plants have consciousness as well. Like who says that they don't? And you know, like why is it worse off? Why is it worse to kill an animal than it is to kill a plant? I, that's something that at this point I'm thinking about, right? So that's another point. And then also like, like I said, with the nutrient density, like a lot of people on vegan diets are deprived of vitamin B, B12 more particularly with vitamin K and then the proteins as well. So if you are on a vegan diet, like I said, this is not about right or wrong. This is about what works and what doesn't work. Experiment for yourself, see what works for you and optimize from there. For me, it didn't work, right? And then I had this more like the decision that I made originally to go plant-based was largely based on emotion because of the people around me. And yes, I experienced like an opening of my higher spiritual awareness, but that's not saying whether that was the food or whether that was my environment and the people I was around, right? So plant-based foods, can cause issues as well, right? Like you can go in the wild, you can eat like some poison ivy that's gonna kill you, right? So it's not that, oh, it's natural, that means it's good. Like there's food, there's like, there's stuff that you can get from nature that can kill you as well. And then there's no saying that plants aren't conscious. Okay, who says that plants aren't conscious? That's just, I think, um, yeah, it's just not true because it's been scientifically proven as well. So yeah, man, if you're considering to go vegan or whatever it is, if you're on the spiritual journey, like I know that food is a huge aspect of who we are, like our digestive process takes the food that we eat and converts it into our body. So very, very important to consider what we put inside our body. And it's just that, you know, before my awareness wasn't there in terms of the animal that sacrificed its life to, you know, give me life. But it's like more now for me at this point, even eating is a spiritual process. Like before eating, having that awareness, having that gratitude, thinking about the animal, thinking about the process that this whole animal had to go through in order to, you know, come here to this point where I'm, I'm eating it and it's becoming part of me. And, you know, it's just like thinking about that and being grateful that I'm actually here with the opportunity to have this life that this animal can give me right now. So either way, like I said, there's no right or wrong. That's not what we're here about. It's not about moral righteousness because I know that vegans in general tend to get very, um, yeah, they're very uh, subscribed to that dogma of, you know, veganism is the only thing, but there's an agenda around this, okay? Even with the Game Changers documentary, I think it was like the producer or the director, someone involved like largely in that project had like a protein, uh, he had like a pea protein company as well. So always important to consider the bigger picture, to have perspective, to see what works for you. At the end of the day, you are your own authority. I'm not here to tell you what's right, what's wrong. I'm just sharing with you my journey, what's worked for me, what has not worked for me, and how I'm thinking about this stuff right now. So at the end of the day, it's also important to consider where the animal food is coming from, because if you're eating the meat from a cow that is stressed out, that is plugged full of hormones, that is plugged full of antibiotics, that is given unnatural feed, that is not allowed to roam out on the grass, that meat will end up affecting you very differently from the meat from a cow that is organically raised and allowed to eat grass and you know um like has some ethical standards around how it was butchered right so that's just my view around uh, nutrition at this point because uh, that's just based on my research based on my experience you judge through the lens of your own experience consider my experience if that helps you as well but with that just wanted to share this i know it's a sensitive topic and i was even uh, holding back from filming this video but i know every time that i'm holding back is the time where i really need to get this out there because this is what you really need to hear right the end of the day it's about letting go of the isms letting go of the dogma and seeing what is true for you in your own heart and what works for you based on what objectives you have for yourself okay so with that i will conclude this video and i leave you in the peace and power of the one infinite creator i hope that you're continuing to improve to level up to grow to take care of yourself 
because you are your most important responsibility. If you aren't taking care of yourself, you can't take care of anyone else. So make sure that you are strong. Make sure that you are healthy. Make sure that you are only feeding your body with ingredients that support it rather than hold it back from expressing itself to its highest potential. Okay, so I'll catch you in the next video. Much love to you. Take care.